updates, updates, updates and hotfixes. The news of the week, right here, right now. Greetings Romis and welcome to Rom, Rom the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to our regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel if you're new here and thanks to all those who come here often, especially those who subscribe. My name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. Not much to report this week, but what we have is juicy, especially the Rennsport update, which sees them adding one new car and one track, among many other things. But other companies have also updated their software. This and more in the following minutes. In fast news, most sport games of much fame, or rather infamy by now, have made headlines yet again by missing their Q2 earnings reports. In a new level of if I can't see it, it can't hurt me, the scheduled earnings call for investors was seemingly ghosted entirely without warning. Not that no news is news, but this seems to be one of the more nail in the already mostly assembled coffin of MSG in our editorially independent opinion. No good deed goes unpunished, of course, and so it happened that Reza just published a new hotfix of Automobilista 2. Of course, there were many tire tread adjustments, it wouldn't be a Reza update without them. But there were also a lot of force feedback adjustments, as was to be expected after the extensive physics changes. Even more interesting are changes like the adjustment of engine inertia and compression rates for hot cars Copa Classic and Fusca. And after that, there's some aero adjustments and smaller things also, some graphics adjustments in the McLaren 720 GT3, the whole P1 Gen 2 and the stock car car Pro Series 2023. Also, Reza makes it clear they corrected a bug with gear ratios, but there may be wrong final ratios and to please let them know as they may have missed cars with that bug. SimMagic have taken the decision to cease support of the M10 wheelbase going forward. Their press release says this is a regrettable decision, but necessary for the rest of their range. With the company being formed in 2018, we can see why one of their earlier products may not conform to their more experienced way of doing things. But it's a shame to see this excellent wheelbase be left to the annals of history without any further first party support and, from what we've read, no options for open sourcing the software so that the incredible minds that use their software can continue to sort the base as a community. Magic have attempted to soften the blow with an unbeatable offer to replace their now outdated M10s with a new Alpha, but again, this is a difficult move to abide without some level of cynicism, which we do try to avoid here at Rom Rom, honest. Simmagic will be at the Sim Racing Expo, so thankfully we'll be able to hear their reasoning from the horse's mouth and hopefully put some meat on the bones of this decision. While motorsport games continue to provide everyone with popcorn material in lieu of sensible management decisions, Studio 397 are continuing their frankly excellent work of bringing the ageing R-Factor 2 up to 2023 standards, albeit not in ease of use. While not a new build version, there have been a massive amount of changes. We'll start with the added tracks, then move to the cars, as there's a lot to talk about here. Lock Drummond has received a going over, but it being a more recent track, this is less of a job. The main change is fixing track limits on the long uphill chicane and the pit entry. Nola Motorsports Park, however, is a 2017 addition to the sim, and so is long overdue for a patch. This modernization has added some of the improved atmospheric details from newer tracks and updated adverts, probably more MSG banners, on the IndyCar layout. The names of the C and D layouts have been fixed, as well as the perspective on the virtual rear view mirror, so hopefully you won't feel like you're running away from the edge of the world anymore. Most notably for NOLA is the new camera files, which means that hopefully, when you're tackling the track, the replay cameras will now show your epic racing lines off much better now. Atlanta Motorsports Park, or Atlanta MP 2014 if you're looking for it on the workshop, is another 2017 track that has had a similar overhaul. The materials have had a quick look over, but the main change here is the addition of modern R-Factor 2 graphical niceties that have been missing from some of these older tracks. Labelled as specular, ambient and atmospheric updates, AMP will never have looked so good. 
As part of this sweep, the AI behaviour, we'll come on to AI later, don't you worry, has been updated and reviewed, including them staying on the left of the pit exit line now rather than going straight to the racing line. Mills Metro, much like the previous tracks, has been given a modernisation pass, with the new PBR shaders and improved night lighting that the constant work S397 have been putting into the sim has given in the past couple of years. Another 2017 track here that has had the same AI review, specifically around the pit exit, so if you're in a single player quality session, these should be more predictable now. Tobin Raceway has had slightly more work. Much like NOLA, AMP and Mills Metro, the general graphics and post-processing has been updated to modern standards and the AI has had it going over. In addition, they've also fixed the pit wall collisions. Whether this meant the wall was grabbing cars or just wasn't there isn't specified, but the best fix I've ever heard is that the sector splits weren't covering the whole track. So there was a possibility of missing the split timer and presumably invalidating your lap for no reason. That's now been fixed. And that's just the tracks. To start, all the front wheel drive touring cars have had the AI modified to have 2% more grip, as well as varying front axle grip modifiers, bringing them into line with the arguably more competitive rear wheel drive Infinity and BMW. All of the cars have had slight tyre wear increases, as well as slightly cooler running tyres added as the default, so hopefully not as much peaky temperatures. They've also added higher pressures made available to the braking system, meaning lockups are significantly more possible now. Check your setups. Also, due to the changes in BOP across multiple years of the NGTC rule set, be sure to pick the right cars to compete against else you may find yourself unrealistically fast, or worse, slow, compared to the AI or online competitors. This update brings small BOP changes in the GT3 class in Studio 397's ongoing attempt to get true parity between the different manufacturers' take on the format. Firstly, unchanged models are the Aston Martin, Radical, McLaren 650S, Ferrari 488, C7, the BMW M4 and M6, and the Audis. Losing 10 kilos is the 2020 Bentley and the Porsche 991. Side note with the Porsche, expect the 992 are incoming shortly if S397 have chosen to specify this in the patch notes. The 2017 Bentley and the McLaren 720S have had 5 kilos removed, as well as the McLaren being given a HUD fix and gaining 5 kilos is the Mercedes AMG. The GTE class remains a popular discipline in R Factor 2, and as ever, balancing the six cars against each other proves a challenge. On standard aero, the Aston Martin has lost 12 kilos, the M8 20 and the CAR 23. The Ferrari and Porsche have gained 15 and 16 kilos respectively. On low drag or Le Mans aero, the Aston has been given 2% more power and the Porsche 1%. The Ferrari has lost 1.5% power and the C8R has lost 15 kilos. While the C7R has remained unchanged, the drag has been reduced slightly. Same for the C8R. And lastly, the pit stop times have been adjusted for all cars apart from the Porsche. Finally, the Porsche Cup cars have had the 2023 liveries from the Carrera Cup GB added to the roster, although looking through the car numbers and liveries, we can't work out which one is which, so we'll leave that up to you in the comments to point out who is who. As happened with American Truck Simulator three weeks ago, it's the turn of Euro Truck Simulator 2 to get updated. Strange as SCS normally release the two updates simultaneously, the core of both games being the same. Work continues on the Germany rework, which is no small feat considering how dense the country is with towns, villages and sprawling city centers. They have added two new factories available for contracts, Feldpinger and Vinzen. Also, you can check how much of the overall or one specific map in percentage you have already explored. For those of you who play as explorers and not as capitalistic exploiters of your workforce like I do. <coughs> A new option has been added in the gallery called Cities. It will show you which cities you've already visited and let you re-watch the city intro if there's one available. Also, vehicle transport trailers have been reworked and now the game has ABS and traction control just like every other GT3 racing sim on the market. Wait. 
And if you're a mod maker, now you can tell Euro Truck Simulator to easily if and for which DLCs the mod is supposed to work. As always, the complete details are behind the link in our description. If you would like to help us bring you better product reviews and sim racing news in the future, you can do so by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Rom Rom. Amongst other perks, becoming a patron will fix your name for posterity like this, but you'll also be able to participate in our podcast recording, get to know what we plan and what we're doing, and will be able to take part in our decisions. So, a big thank you to our patrons and members. If you come here often, please consider subscribing. It's taken them a while, but the Rennsport team released a new update into the closed beta that brings many new things. First of all are the Praga R1, we're supposed to dispel the notion Rennsport is focusing on GT3s, and a figure of 8 track, the 8 Eta, that started life as a joke, but now has been really released. We tried it, it's very low grip and actually makes for a fun, let's see what this car can do with the assists all disabled. The previously mentioned Praga R1 is significant fun on the edge of its stock setup's performance, which gives the drifters cause to dream of another game engine that can handle their specific discipline. Furthermore, there've been changes in the force feedback as well as the introduction of a damage model. Let's get into the details. Cars can now be damaged, which may sound like nothing special, but means the sim recognizes where a car starts and where it ends and also where it encounters another object in a more or less catastrophic kind of way. Programming this is not easy and we expect many passes on the code until the developers are happy with the way damage is modeled. We are also expecting car companies protest as they've done with any other sim out there and forbidding Rennspot to show too much damage. Yep, if your preferred sim does not have a realistic damage model, it may very well be because some idiot manager from the car company has not allowed their whittle cars to get more than a scratch, at most. Poor little snowflakes feel it in their b****, I mean bones or something. For now, there is no option to repair damage while on a race, but there now seems to be an MFD that allows you to change tire pressures from the default 20.6 and 20.8 PSI, going for the R factor and I racing model of tire we see there, Rennsport. Back to the update. All GT3 cars now have equalized fuel consumption and have received a new balance of performance. The Porsche 911 GT3 R 992 got a different upshift timing and a fix to its engine sounds, as well as the sounds of the BMW M4 GT3 got fixed. There was a lot of complaining done regarding the lack of quality of the engine samples on the BMW prior and these seem to have disappeared. Thankfully. And while Rennsport say they updated the curb sounds in our tests, it was so quiet we didn't really notice anything. The tire heat display is more accurate. We notice it doing anything interesting now for the first time, so we'll take their word for it. It's quite possible we hadn't noticed it before because it was just there. Track limits are now better defined, while as far as they say, Rennsport has become more lenient with it. Seems I'm so aggressive when driving, the leniency does not apply to me. But that's on me, of course. Also, to help in deciding penalties for track limits, Rennsport will check if you gained time and penalize accordingly. 